it, it's important to understand too the origin of so-called Semitics. Again, that, that, that's a term that's really a mixture of the Indo-European invasion and the, the autochthonous, if you will, African or Africoid populations of uh, Africa itself, uh, the Near East, and, and of course, what we would call Arabia. Uh, and, and Can I jump in there, sir? I'm sorry? Can I jump in there, sir? Yeah, please, please, yeah. Yeah, there's a theory which is actually now mainstream that says that Semitic comes from Africa, not mm -hmm. the Middle East. Mm -hmm. um, what's happened is, as people have looked at languages in countries like Ethiopia, Eritrea, uh, Sudan, that count kind of region, there's a theory that is now developing that what's called Afroasiatic is a group of languages and their origin is somewhere in and around Ethiopia. So some people think it's to the north, more Eritrea region. Some people think it's more to the south, Ethiopia, Kenya region. Some people think it's more the Sudan region. And the languages that come out of that is Hausa, which mm -hmm. is in northern Nigeria, ancient Egyptian, Cushitic, Cushitic is more or less Somali, mm -hmm. um, Berber, which is the language of the, uh, the black folks in the desert, the Tamashek uh, speakers in the desert. Um, and all of these languages are ancestrally from one place, and that one place is somewhere in and around Ethiopia. So this is what that means. The theory that Sheikh Anta Diop had, which is that Semitic people were a mixture of Africans and Europeans, that now might be an old and outdated theory because the new position seems to be that Semitic originated somewhere in East Africa and the place in East Africa is somewhere around Ethiopia, Eritrea, Kenya, and Sudan. So Semitic is from one of those places. And consequently, the very first Semitic speakers would have been sub-Saharan Africans. And the only thing is we, what we don't know is, did they look like Ethiopians? Did they look like Eritreans? Did they look like um, South Sudanese? And that's the discussion. It's one of, they, they would look like one of those three populations. So this is changing the game because what it means is, is we now no longer have to concede Semitic. And so yeah. the people that today call themselves Semites, they've got some explaining to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, 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 it comes out of an African language. And I think that, that gentleman was uh, Greenberg. I'm not sure of his first name. But Correct, yeah, that, yeah. That yeah. The linguist, that was his theory originally, and it's yeah. being accepted by, by more and more people. And it, it, it's called Afroasiatic, but it's really African, then that offshoots in, in, into Asia, et cetera, et cetera. And it's a shame that he called it Afroasiatic because that's propaganda. That's propaganda. It should be East African origin family. Full stop. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but you know, it's a concession to the previous theory. Yeah. Um, so, so that you know, it can be accepted by by scholars. Uh, so uh, interesting. Greetings. My name is Robin Walker. I'm also known as the Black History Man. I am perhaps best known for my 2006 book, When We Ruled. Based on this book, I'm launching a new online history course aimed at you, the adults. You could be a parent, you could be a teacher, a mechanic, cleaner, professionals, care workers, security guards, taxi drivers, kitchen workers, entrepreneurs, tech heads, lawyers, all of you. We want people from all over the world to be empowered by our content. We want you to gain mastery over your history and heritage. And you can do this by subscribing to our course. Click on the link to get this powerful, life-changing material. You know, one of, one of the inter, in, in, interesting movements 
again is is into the the um, uh, uh, India because um, I, I find it interesting because I'm a bit of a student of Buddhism, etc., and and Eastern uh, uh, traditions for, for quite a while, without necessarily knowing the connection. But 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 again, if if you, if you go through Mohenjo-daro and and, and Harappa and the, the, the indigenous uh, uh, civilization. And, uh, and, and you, you learn a little about the, the origins of, of, of Indian uh, history um, um, and, and, and the um, conflict that, that existed then between the Indo-Europeans and the, the, the Dr Dravidians, uh, which were the original uh, inhabitants. And of course, the eventual conquest and then almost liquidation, you know, or destruction, shall we say, of the original civilization. A lot of the Dravidians ended up going into the forest, and they were these were the Sadhus in terms of the religion. And it, you know, the, the religion that has that has come out of, of, of India, and you know, people talk a lot about the Vedas. The Vedas, the Vedas are something that the Indo-Europeans, you know, brought in. But uh, what re really did um, how should I say? What, what has come to the fore in terms of really, you know, what we think of Indian religion and what is taking over as Indian religion, as well as come out of the Upanishads, which which comes from the original Dravidians, and which ends up as Sankha philosophy and ends up as Vedanta, which is again what we know as the the sort of Indian religion of, of enlightenment. And this is a religion in 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 which you know Buddha arose. Buddha arose. And, and if, we, if we look at the original statues of, of, of Buddha, you know, and, and of course they still have them, you know, with the curly hair. Sometimes the features now have been transformed to, quotes, Asiatic features, if you will. But, you know, that, that, that iconography still, still maintains itself. So we know that Buddha was a black man. Again, if you look at the early uh, uh, statues, and, and he came out of that same um, spirituality religions, uh, shall we say, that, that came out of Africa. And um, I, I, I know you know you know that period very well in, in terms of, of, of the conflict and then the, the whole caste system that came out of that. And, and, and with, with the dominance then of, of Sanskrit and, and the European ideas with, with the Vedas as religion and so on, and, and pushing everything um, out, down, down and out into the forest. As well as into southern India, and of course the darkest people, Indians are in southern India, and so on, as well as at the bottom of the scale in terms of the, the caste system uh, in, in India. So we see how that that has come out of Europe, and has gone to the east, has come out of Europe, and has gone to the to the west, if you will, you know, all over the rest of the world. That that same idea of of, of supremacy, which is so inimical, you know, to the advancement of of people. And, and, and civilization itself, because it's a, it, it's a claustrophobic uh, our, our mindset. Yeah, let me say a little bit about that. Yeah. Uh, my research shows that the, the oldest religion in the Indian region was the worship of Lord Shiva. And the religion was called Shaivism, or if you're gonna give it a modern name, you would call it Shaivism. And this is where the religion is represented as a serpent called Kundalini. Mm. And then you've got the different chakras and each one starting at the bottom of your spine and then ending up in your pineal glands. Some mm. people say the, 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 the top of your head, each one represents a higher and higher stage of enlightenment. And you also have uh, with India, the, the deities have male and female pairs. So you had Shiva, you had um, uh, Shakti, which is the female. Mm -hmm. You also had Vishnu, male. You had Sattva, who's female. And there are many, many, many others. But this is, as you rightly say, sir, pre-Hinduism. This is not Hinduism. And as you rightly say, this is coming out of the Upanishads. And these ideas of you becoming enlightened, symbolized by, if you like, traveling up your spine to either get into the, the guru chakra. Um, this idea, there's a whole series of religious practices that go with these religious practices. And the religious practices could be uh, pranayama, breath control, diet, cleansing practices, 
meditation, correct living, and so on. And that is the oldest religion. And there seems to be evidence that we can trace that religion to the Indus Valley. Uh, and the Indus Valley um, um, uh, civilization was definitely a black civilization. Uh, we know that the Indus Valley civilization, uh, sickle cell was a major problem in that uh, civilization mm. because the, the surviving um, uh, uh, skulls show evidence of the kinds of, if you like, damage or alteration consistent with a sickle cell uh, 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 po population. And we also can trace, um, in terms of languages, what was probably spoken in the Indus Valley would be related to what the Dravidians, uh, Tamils, whatever term you want to use, are, are speaking. So the, the connection is definitely there. Mm -hmm. Now, as you rightly say, there was an Aryan conquest uh, my research says that took place between 2000 BC and 1500 BC. Now, a lot of Hindu scholars have tried to deny this Aryan conquest because they look at it as this is European propaganda to take their history. Mm. But as far as I know, if there was no Aryan conquest, the language spoken by the Hindu speakers would be unrelated to European. But it's not unrelated, it's related. Do you see? It's mm. related. So as you um, say, the, 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 the Hindu religion took a lot of the original deities and turned them around and turned them into a, a part of a system that unfortunately one could call an early form of apartheid are uh, based around color and shade-ism, taken to the nth degree. And that system, with the appropriate modifications, is the system that's in place now. So what then happened was, because Hinduism was oppressing the dark-skinned majority, you then had large numbers of Black people saying, no, forget this. And so there's a theory that the elevation of Lord Krishna in Hinduism was to win the black populations back to Hinduism. It was a propaganda move. He's, he's black in, in, I don't know if it's in Sanskrit or whatever Indian language, right? Yeah, correct, yeah. And I've seen images, I use an image, there's a, a 14th century image from one of the temples, which I use as teaching material where Krishna is indeed um, jet black, mm. and the Hindus have made Krishna an earthly manifestation of Vishnu, and that was a way of winning people back. Um, but then the indigenous people had their own ideas, and they came with an anti-caste religion, and that's where the Buddha comes in. So he was preaching against the caste system, and then there was a time period in Indian history when the Dravidians were back in power and they promoted Buddhism heavily. And mm. so Buddhism became a big thing. But then as the Aryans gathered more and more strength, they were able to push Buddhism mostly out of India. So it ended up in Sri Lanka. It ended up in the Far East because essentially um, if people wanted to maintain a caste system and here you have uh, a new religion teaching against the caste system, they decided to stamp on it. And so it ended up in Sri Lanka. And again, mm -hmm. I used teaching material. Mm -hmm. There's a very famous uh, Sri Lankan city called Anuradhapura. And there's this massive image of the Buddha known as the sleeping Buddha or the reclining Buddha. And the hair is fully intact. And it, that needs to be seen. So if you're watching this, Google the sleeping or reclining Buddha from Anuradhapura in Sri Lanka. And mm -hmm. yeah, we get some idea of exactly what type of hair <laughs> the mm -hmm. Buddha um, 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 had. As a thank you for visiting our website, we are giving you a free copy of our exclusive 100 Black History Facts, which is in fact a taster of our course content. Make sure you leave your email address and we will send it right to you. 
We hope it inspires you to dig deeper into your history and heritage. And I think it's interesting, as you mentioned now, that uh, but Buddhism went, went from India throughout the, the, the rest of, of Asia. And, and you, you, you can trace it into Tibet. You can trace it, trace it uh, into China. You can trace it into Korea. You can trace it in, into Japan. And, and um, you know, Padmasambhava and, and, and different uh, Indians, Atisha and, and so on, uh, spread it out, out, out throughout. And it, it actually joined with our, or replaced to some degree the original, you know, Chinese religion, if you will, of, 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 of Taoism. Although, you know, the, the blend is really uh, very, very similar. Um, so uh, I don't think there's any, you know, significant difference be, be, between the two, so to speak. Um, so, so uh, the the East, the, the East very heavily has been influenced um, by this African spirituality um, coming out from Mahendra Dauro and Harappa, the Dravidians, uh, the Buddhists, etc., etc., etc. And and I think it, it it has been the basis of their civilizations. Um, um, and in Japan, it, it, um, it's mixed with Shintoism, which tends to be an older religion. Um, but but I don't think it's antagonistic because Shintoism, I think, tends to be a sort of shamanism, kind of an earth religion. Um, so there's not really a distinction. But I think Buddhism is much more sophisticated than than Shintoism, and we know that um, Buddhism has been responsible for for so much of the the art and the intellectualism of Japan, you know, as it has been also in China and, and, and in, in, in Tibet. Um, and, and also the martial arts as well, sir. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I, I, was, yes. forgetting, uh, I was forgetting that. It, it, I mean, it's been the, the basis of, of Asian culture for, for a long time. Um, the, the, the discipline, the creativity. And as you mentioned, in terms of the, the, the martial arts, as part of the physical discipline, as you, as you know, it's basically a mental discipline primarily. So that's the physical discipline uh, aspect of it. Mm -hmm.